If you want to understand the mean value theorem, then stick around to the end of this video. In this video we're going to look at the mean value theorem. We're going to start off by looking at the mathematics and we'll compare the mathematics to this little graph here. And then we'll go on and we'll look at it in the graphical calculator. So let's start off with this function in red here. So this is just some random function. And we've picked the leftmost point of the function and we've called it A. And we've picked the rightmost point of the function and we've called it B. We call this point here A. So this is the x coordinate as a value of A and also the x coordinate up here of this point as a value of B. The height is going to be your f of B and the height to this point here will be your f of A. So if we were to join these two points together then we could see that we're going to have the height from here to here is going to be the f of B minus the f of A. Now we know that that height there is going to be approximately equal to the gradient at this point here, so that's the f derivative at point A, times the distance B minus A. Now we've seen that whenever we looked at the uh, differentials video. All we're saying is that this height here is going to be the gradient at this point times this distance. And that's going to give us this height. So we've seen that, as I said before, when we looked at the differentials. Now the mean value theorem is an extension to this, and it allows us to replace this approximately equal to with an actual equality. And we're able to do that because it turns out that there's always going to be some value zeta. Now zeta is just the x coordinate along here. So zeta is going to take on a value which is going to be greater than or equal to minus a and less than or equal to b. And whenever we find this value of zeta, if we take the derivative at that point and then multiply it by b minus a, then we can replace this approximately equal to with an equality. So we're going to show a little uh, graphical proof of this and we'll talk over with relation to this little graph here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll see it in the graphical calculator. Now let's call the angle that this line here makes with the x-axis the angle alpha. So we know that the value of the tan alpha, well, tan alpha is going to be the y divided by the x. Now we know the y distance here is going to be f of b minus f of a, and the x distance here is going to be b minus a. So we can say that tan alpha is f of b minus f of a all upon b minus a. So that's just simple trigonometry. But now if I was to take this blue line here and we were able to move it up and down, then we could move it up until eventually it hits a point at the edge of the function. And that line here would be the tangent line at that point. So I'll say that again. If we can move this blue line up and down, but keep the same angle alpha here, then eventually we could move this blue line all the way up to where this black line is now. And at this point here, which I've got noted as a little circle, this point would be the very last point at which this line here meets our curve. And that would be a tangent at this point. So that means if this is a tangent at this point, and also the angle is exactly the same, that is this angle alpha has been kept exactly the same, then we can say in this instance here, tan alpha, 
we know it's going to be this value here, but it's also going to be equal to the f derivative at zeta, because this point here is the, the line here is the tangent at this point, it's the very last point at which it meets the curve. So that's a tangent. So if we equate these two equations, then we can say, therefore, that the f derivative of zeta is equal to f of b minus f of a all up in b minus a. So our little um, proof of sorts here just relies on the geometric representation here. So just to confirm it and get a better understanding, let's look at this actually um, live within the graphical calculator. So we have the same graph drawn out here within the graphical calculator. Now we're able to move the points round about. So let's say, for example, we have this line from A to B, and we want to be able to move this line up and down. So we can move this line up and down with this value of A here. And you can see that that's going to shift the line up and down. Now, we're also able to look at the actual gradient at each of the point, that is the points, that is the tangent at the points on this curve by shifting this line round about. And you can see that moves round about. So what we said we wanted to do is we wanted to take this line here and shift it up until the very last point meets the point of this curve here. So let's go ahead and we'll shift that up. So if I shift this up, you'll see it's heading up and up till eventually we're almost there. So we want to shift it up just a little bit further. So it turns out the point we want to get to, and I've already, obviously already looked at this, it's 2.0185. So that's us right at the very edge. So we know that this line here is the tangent at a certain point and we're interested at where that point is. So that point, if we were to drop it all the way down, it would drop down to some point on this x-axis and this point here would be our zeta. Now we also said that we, as our, part of our geometric proof, we want to take the actual tangent uh, point and actually shovel it up and so it actually sits on this zeta. And we can see that this black line, which is going to be our f derivative of zeta, is going to be the same as this black line here, which is our f of b minus f of a all up in b minus a. So if I move this round about, until eventually this black line sits on top of the other black line. Now that sits actually at 0 point minus 0 0.067 and you can see at this point here both of these lines sit together. So because both of them sit together we're able to say that one of them is the derivative at zeta and the other one is the gradient of this line here which is our f of b minus f of a all up in b minus a and you can see that both lines sit on top of each other so they are in fact equal. Now that's all we're going to talk about for the moment with regards to the mean value theorem. You'll find the mean value theorem cropping up on several theorems in analysis. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.